Let's get to it. Daring. A lot of us have been patiently waiting for this boat to make its way into Legends, and I have to say, it does not disappoint. If you're a fan of Royal Navy destroyers, you should stop researching whatever you have in your bureau and replace it with Daring immediately. It is a great jack-of-all-trades boat, and it is a blast to play. The match we are watching is on Atlantic, and let's just say it's hard fought until the last few seconds. Why is this boat so good? Well, British DDs to me have always been some of the best destroyers in the game. They just can do everything pretty well. A jack of all trades, so to speak, but that's not very British, so let's call it a George of all trades. Meaning this boat can do a lot of things well. It's really not the master of one specific trait or playstyle, but you can do a lot of things well. To start this match, no CVs and not a lot in the terms of radar cruisers, so we're going to go straight into this cap and try to quick cap it before the enemy does anything. It is legendary tier, so I'd say for the first 10 minutes, of course, cap points are off limits. You cannot sail into them. So, <laughs> um, yeah, it's just best to probably get in there and quick cap if you don't think you're going to get rushed by DDs or a radar cruiser. This game is a game of throws, but which side? <laughs> You'll just have to watch and see. Before we go any further, though, let's take a quick look at how I set the ship up. It's a great hybrid destroyer, so really you can set it up in a ton of different ways, and I'll be curious to hear your guys' builds in the future when you get your daring. You could do Jellico to buff heals and fire chance. You could do fully packed with Jellico to get an extra heal. You could do Grot Mass for an insane 13% fire chance and nearly a two second reload. Very, very toxic. Or if you're like me, you could take a middle of the road approach. And of course, I am trying to play more free to play commanders to, uh, you know, show what you can do without spending any money on the game if you don't want to. And yes, I'm opinionated on this boat in a good way, in a positive way. I really like it, but it's free. You don't have to pay really to do the bureau. You need to have the Jervis. You need to have the lightning. So it's all grindable for free. So yes, I'm going to share my opinion. Now the build. Aiming Systems Mod 1, Steering Gears, Concealment, and MBM 3. I'm using Vian with Quick Fix, Perceptive, Sidestep, and Rather Be Torchin. Bay and Sims round out the setup, and we're left with a tanky, stealthy boat that has good gun performance, great fire chance, decent torpedoes, good concealment and maneuverability. All right, well, we got the cap, and we're circling back around because I have a sneaking suspicion that, well... There's the Kleber. That is the DD that we must have hit earlier with the Torp, and I think he's looking for revenge. And he brought a friend. He's backed up by a Delny. He also has his reload booster, as you can see, so we just have to drop spot immediately. Luckily, we get him out of here, and I'm really predicting some Torps on the way, so we're going to scoot on out of here. Now, the AP on this boat is very good, and of course, if you're ever fighting against a Delny or a Kabarosk, they have a 50mm belt of armor on their side, so you should always switch to armor-piercing rounds when you have a flat broadside, so that you can deal some damage and not shatter your shells on their broadside. There are the Torps, and although we lost quite a bit of health there in that engagement, it was worth it to get Kleber off of the board. And um, we're going to circle back around and see if we can't deal some damage to Delny while the sonar is still going. Really, the big ships that they have backing them up are still nowhere close to being able to help them. They're way behind the island. What is that? 13 kilometers away, 14 kilometers away. So let's move in and see if we can get just a little bit more damage on Delny. And I'll have a smoke back up so I can always escape if it goes poorly. So right now, I'm calling Daring the best destroyer at Legendary tier. It does everything so well. <laughs> it's so fun. But let's go ahead and look at some of the stock stats on paper so that I can kind of paint a picture for everyone. And, uh, oh, Delny caught a Torp 2. <laughs> totally intended to do that, yeah. All right, so health-wise, Daring edges out the gearing. And, of course, the Shimakaze. So she's going to be in third place, but it's actually even better than that because you get two base heals, 2,400 health apiece. That's going to bring your effective HP up to nearly 26,000. So kind of approaching Kabarask levels, but unlike Kaba, you don't have to give up your smoke screens in order to use the heals. You still get your smoke, you still get your sonar, and you get the heal. So it is very, very nice. 
Moving on, eh, things keep getting better, honestly. So, the guns. They have a th around a three second base reload, and the range is 11.1. .1. I feel like that's decent enough that you don't really need the range mod in slot four. Although, I would like to point out now that it is a 10% buff instead of a 5% buff like it used to be. It is now that way after this most recent update. And also, the turret traverse module in slot 1 got buffed, so if you're curious about revamping some builds, now would be a good time. Um, never has there been more of an option when it comes to your module setup. So the rune got smacked, but he gets away. We set a fire here, I believe, and honestly, I thought that was going to take him out of the match. Anyways, I thought the fire would burn him out and that would be the end of it, but Rune is really going to come back to bite us in the butt. Okay, moving on. HE shell damage. It's a little anemic at 1700 damage a piece. These are pretty small caliber guns, but the fire chance is that of a much larger caliber shell. They're only 113 millimeter guns, that's the smallest DD guns at legendary tier, but they get the same base fire chance as the Kabarosk, a DD with much, much larger guns, 130s. Now couple that with these reload times, and this is a fantastic fire starter, one of the best destroyers in the game. DPM is respectable with that low HE alpha, and while Gearing is still king of the castle and is going to eat your groceries, Gearing will pay for it dearly in a straight-up gunfight with you. I would say mind your P's and Q's around Gearing and Kaba, and of course the French cigarette boat, if it still has its reload booster, it's going to do a lot of damage to you. Also watch out for Sumner and Hayate. Yes, Hayate. <laughs> Stick around for the next video this week and I'll show you why. But other than those boats, Deering is a menace and a scary gunboat when it's set up kind of like mine. Other DDs should, uh, they should probably fear you. The AP shells. We were going to test them out on the broadside Delny earlier, but didn't get a chance to, but they have improved penetration angles, so they're definitely worth using when you're taking a break from torching everybody. Moving on to the torpedo armament. You get 10 torps. They deal around 16,700 damage. That's the lowest at the tier, and so that means your alpha strike potential is the lowest as well. 160k, that is half of the Shimakaze. They do have 10km range, so that's better than everything except gearing. 62 knots, 1300 meter detection, they have about an 8 second reaction time, which is pretty average. And they reload in 2 minutes, that's kind of a long time. It's still better than the gearing, but really it is not spectacular and you're going to be finding yourself thinking, man, I wish these torpedoes would be reloaded. And uh, at the end of the game, you'll see why. You could spec into Torps using, what, who is it, Tirowit, I believe, and maybe see some better stats there. I personally just enjoy the Daka. It is a lot of fun. But uh, if you do a Torp build in the future, I look forward to hearing from you. All right, well, earlier I mentioned this was a game of throws. Now you might see just who's throwing the match. We are. We had a two-ship lead, and while we're currently triple-capping them, I see the tides turning really quickly. I thought by leaving the rune over there with the teammates that we spawned with that they would be able to run them down pretty easily. I believe we had a full health coal bear over there the last time I looked, and that ship is freaking nightmare material. So we left them alone, we came over for A cap, and it, it did come back to bite me. I started shooting from the open water at the Des Moines, kind of thinking, well, the game's over, I'll get a little more damage, and here we are. <laughs> uh, Mogador got the cap for us here at A, so that is good, and then things have really gone to pot. The full health gearing is definitely a problem with the Des Moines radar as well, so that is why we are now sailing back over to Seaside. Hopefully we can stop the Alsace from taking C and we can kind of force him away, but they took B, now they're going to take A. It is definitely not looking good. I'm trying to stay out of the gearing spotting range, of course, and on that note, the daring is the best of any DD up here at the highest tier. 6.4 stock concealment, that means 5.4 with bay, look at me now, and a camo, of course, which if you are playing the game at the highest tier and you don't have a camo on your ships, I think you're doing something wrong. It's a 4.5% buff to shell dispersion and concealment. The AA on daring looks to be one of the best legendary DDs but I would imagine it really amounts to a heel of beans to legendary CVs, so just dodge. 
At the very least, I would say you have six short duration smokes, which I find to be one of the best defenses against enemy CVs. It's just another reason why I love these British destroyers. The gearing's far enough behind me that I'm going to stop here, try to farm out the Alsace a little bit, and see if I can force him back. Our ship over on Seaside is actually a little lower health than I thought, so let's see if we can keep him alive. And it has turned into uh, 44. <laughs> Now, Daring is maneuverable, but she's kind of slow in the straight lines. Last place, in fact. So, I would always run a speed flag if you have them. And it also becomes more and more apparent as I run back and forth across the map that we don't have a speed boost consumable. That is another one of the downsides of Daring. You're really going to get outpaced by basically every other destroyer at the tier. But, anyways, overall very strong stats, and I think it shows in her gameplay as well. In this game, the comfortable lead seems to be slipping. We still have enough points, though, that I'm trying to just stay alive. Like, I feel like that's still an option that we could win on points if enough of our ships stay alive and we stay alive. Okay, so we talked a little bit about the cons of this ship. Weaker on the side of the torpedoes, for sure. And the slow speeds seem to be about the worst of it, though, as far as I can see. Overall, this ship is really, really fun. At the end of the day, I would rather play anything in a gunboat role than a torpedo boat role. I see torpedo boats as kind of one-trick ponies. You can use your big torpedo alphas to smack battleships and other ships, but you can't really fight against other DDs or contest caps or be super aggressive. You're often relegated to just sailing around while you wait for your torpedoes to rearm. And that is why if I have the option on a hybrid DD, I am always going to run guns. I see it being more influential in the match, just my personal preference. Now we get gearing caught in a crossfire and we take about half of his health, but it's not enough. He's going to get away with it, unfortunately. Des Moines is still pushing this way. I would say at least Des Moines seems to be out of radar and we lost our coal bear. So the points lead, it's not going to uh it's not going to work we're not going to win on points we're going to have to kill some more ships rune looks like a perfect candidate to get killed and i think he's finally going to push this way so we'll drop some uh, little british british sea mines here for him and we'll see if he runs into them now i'm curious what you guys think of the daring just by watching her gameplay i'm sure you'll check out some of the other cc videos on her as well and i guess my next question is does anyone still play legendary tier this was the first game I have queued up here in this tier since the Burgonia last update. I have heard a lot of the CCs talk about long waits in matchmaking, trying to find matches just maybe because of a lack of players. I don't know. I'm curious what you guys think. Just a few seconds left and I'll give my final thoughts on this ship. I am very happy the way that they are doing the Bureau now. In order to get this awesome, amazing, powerful DD, you have to work your way up the British DD line. You have to have the Jervis, you have to have the Lightning, and I love that. I think it's good that you, you know, have to have some of the boats to get this legendary ship. So, the game is over. We desperately need to kill the Des Moines. It looks like some of the Torps might be good, so we're just going to start shooting as much as I can. I probably should have started shooting a little bit earlier, but let's see with the guns, with the torps, if we're able to salvage this one. If he dies, it'll be a big enough points swing to sway the match. We get two torp hits on him, actually, but that low torp alpha comes back to bite me in the butt. However, update day, I cannot stand to play another game, so this one's going to have to do it for the daring. <laughs> Uh, overall, thank you guys for watching. Be sure to hit the like button. I would really appreciate it and subscribe to the channel for future videos. I'll catch you in the next one. See ya.